I just think being in person is so natural. And I think you're able to build a better connection with somebody being in person instead yeah. of talking through a screen. It's not as intimate. Welcome to the Bar High Media Podcast, where we're all about raising the bar in the world of freelancing. Your hosts, Bridget and Spencer, share expert tips and insights on media and content creation. With every episode, you can expect to take your freelance game to the next level. Should I record a podcast in person or remotely? If you're thinking of starting a podcast, this is probably one of the first questions that you're asking yourself. Now, today is a very special episode of the Bar High Media Podcast. This is our very first in-person podcast. So naturally, we're going to be talking about setting up in-person podcasts. This is something that's been a learning curve for us for sure, because we normally record remotely over the web using Riverside. So for this episode, we're going to chat about how we've transitioned from remote to in-person. We'll let you know about the benefits of in-person versus remote, things to consider when setting up your space, equipment that we're using and how much we spent, options for setting up your studio space, and some tech issues that we've dealt with. Now, if you want to check out how we've set up our space and you want to watch this episode, and you're just listening to the episode, you can actually watch the video episode on YouTube or on Spotify. And if you're already watching on YouTube, hello, welcome to our studio. Welcome to the studio. Welcome. So when it comes to podcasts, there are three different ways you can record. You can record in person, you can record remotely, and you can do a hybrid of both, which we still have to figure out, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, So let's talk about the the benefits of each. Uh, You spearheaded this in-person thing, Spencer. So why don't you talk about why you were so excited to switch from remotely to in-person? Well, just based off of how you and I both have been podcasting for the past two years now, Mm -hmm. everything's been digital. I've done maybe two in person. No, that's a lie. I've done one in-person podcast just recently. Was that the one on Monday? Yeah. The one on Monday and all the other ones, like the one I did with you, Mm -hmm. the one I did with a couple of other people were all digital and you don't really get that like, I don't know, in-person connection, Mm -hmm. right? Because there's a communication connection and then there's the in-person connection, right? right? And just making like actual eye eye contact (laughs) like you and I are We're so in-person right now. Yeah, so in-person, right? (laughs) Like I can no longer sit in my boxers and do a podcast. Have you been sitting in your boxers doing these podcasts these whole time? I can't give that away. I can't reveal. I can't reveal. (laughs) Yeah, I can't. Let your imagination take you you wherever you want. But um, yeah, no, I just think being in person is so natural. Like Mm -hmm. this is... This is OG for all of us. 100%. And I think you're able to build a better connection with somebody being in person instead yeah. of talking through a screen. It just feels way less uh, impersonal. I think the word is that I'm mm, trying to use way here. Way less impersonal? Way, more personal? More less. I don't know. We're not a, not we're as, not a dictionary. No, it's not as intimate, right? <laughs> yes, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and sure. I think when you're trying to build a rapport or get to know somebody, mm-hmm. Being in person isn't the best way to do it. Right. So that's why I was like, let's let's make this happen. Right. Um, you know, uh, this house that we're now in mm-hmm. filming and doing this in-person podcast was not on the plans, right. you know, a year ago or six months ago. And uh, once I saw where uh, we could, you know, build this opportunity, I was like, why not? What's, what's the worst that could happen? You yeah. Know? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like remote podcasting got really big. Like in-person podcasting, probably was the start of podcasting and then remote got really big over the pandemic. So then, and it's a lot easier to do remote interviews. So then everybody was just kind of like, let's just do remote. Let's just go on Riverside. Riverside, which is, as I said, the platform that we record on actually started unintentionally at the beginning of 2020. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then just blew up because everybody was recording remotely. They shot the puck where they're expecting to be What's the, is this a metaphor? Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. Shot the be puck where the, in the puck net. is going to be, or, or place yourself where the puck's going to be. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, not like you said, they didn't plan for this to happen, but right. they were just in the right place, right time. Yeah. And they were able to really hook in um, when everybody was so separated, which yeah. is amazing. So, congratulations, Riverside, on, you know, killing it. Killing it. Killing it. So, in person, though, what we've kind of figured out is that in person is a lot more technical oh, than geez. remote. Yeah. Like we've gone through, you know, we've jumped through hoops to figure this out. Not um, even just with, just with us, with other people too. That yeah, see clients. us yeah. as uh, people that should know what we are doing, <laughs> which we do from an online standpoint. Yes. And you know, we just, you know, you think it'd just be a copy and paste in person, yeah. but. 
No. No, it's not because you need so much other equipment, which we're going to get into. So if you are starting a podcast, I would say start off remotely. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. get get used to the flow. Mm-hmm. It really helps with like getting other guests on as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you want that like in-person connection, definitely upgrading in the future is an option like we've yeah. done. Like we started off remotely and then we decided to upgrade. Mm-hmm. Um, some other, you know, benefits about it is... Like I said, remote, you have access to way more people. So, you know, uh, if you want to interview, I don't know, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, he loves going on random people's He will make you podcasts. require a VR headset, so there might be an additional expense. Uh, yes, yeah, and <laughs> technical work. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> um, if you wanted to interview somebody like that, like it just opens up the door to um, interviewing other people, which I'm excited for us to figure out hybrid re- recording. So you and I can be in person, mm-hmm. but we can also have guests from wherever we want. Yeah. Um, another thing is that I think I'm curious about, well, I think I know what you're going to say, but reels like Instagram reels Mm -hmm. and TikTok videos look Mm -hmm. way better if they're in person, way better. Yeah. Like they're more engaging because when they're, I don't know, like the, the front on face view of just like looking in a webcam, Mm -hmm. I just feel, I don't know. It's just not as personal as like seeing i feel like they're more fun when they're in person yeah i agree um just one of the edits that i did uh previously uh i I don't want to name you you'll see the real but um yeah when i was editing it i didn't realize how close up this person was to the screen when i when i was editing it and i was like oh okay once it was posted i was like okay i guess it's kind of too late now to To like back go back up and and post it and yeah i agree like having that in person you know, point of view with a 4K camera. I have a crappy 1080p webcam camera right. that I'm recording from my computer. Yeah, which you can tell if you watch the first episodes yeah. of the Bar High Media uh, podcast. Every time Spencer would edit, he'd be like, my camera looks like shit. Yeah, it looks horrible. <laughs> well, I, I've made some more purchases on fixing that. But yeah, this this way is, like I said, like I think it allows people to be feel... Like, it allows people to feel more invited into mm-hmm. the conversation yeah. instead of being like, I'm just watching another Zoom or right. somebody's whatever it is, like, yeah. like face FaceTime or something, right? Right, yeah, like you're just like within a FaceTime call. Yeah. I'm excited what, to see what it's going to be like when we have a guest in person to see if maybe if they're more nervous or less nervous or if Ooh. we can pick up on their nerves a little bit more than you can pick up on things online. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. We do have our first in-person guest uh, scheduled for next week. So yep. that'll be fun. That'll probably, that episode will be coming out at some point at after some this point. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't know when. Um, so, okay. So, oh, another benefit is that if you do record remotely, although reels look better in person, reels can be easier to make if you record remotely right. because you can use features like AI features online. Mm. For example, Riverside has this new magic clips feature, which is just, takes all the best parts of your recording. So if you're recording in person, you kind of don't really have access to those, Mm -hmm. which whatever. I mean, if you have an editor like Spencer, you pretty much have an AI AI thing. Yeah, that's that's a great point that I think a lot of people need to take into consideration is the fact that like, what are your skill levels Mm -hmm. with post-production? Can you, you know, uh, know how to edit the audio and separate it from two people. So that's the thing. It's like, okay, start with the basics first. Start right. online mm-hmm. using something in Riverside that provides you all these different services just to kind of speed up the process for right. you is so like um, convenient, mm-hmm. I guess you can say, right? And then as, as you become more efficient with your skills with podcasting and you want to build that more intimate conversation with somebody, then you can advance invest into the proper uh technology that you need you know we have a 4k camera going Mm -hmm. we have two microphones going where if you are doing in person all you need is a laptop most laptops have it in embedded microphone and it comes with the camera everything's right there it's pretty much open it up web browser click record right usb mic yeah go for it done right Mm -hmm. so like the 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 steps for that are way less than going in person right uh it's we're not saying don't do it it's just be mindful of like how much are you willing to invest into Mm -hmm. starting that online that's very true very true so there if you are recording in person when you do decide to make the upgrade if you do decide there are some things that you need to consider about the space that you're recording in so Mm. right now spencer and i are recording in. he just moved into this 
big fancy new house. And we have this nice big media room in here, which I don't know, you may be able to kind of hear it within the audio right now that it's a pretty empty room at this yeah. point. We're going to plan to fill it up with more stuff like rugs and pillows and well, maybe not pillows. That'd be kind of weird, but uh, maybe like a How rug. How comfy can you get when yeah. you're having a conversation? <laughs> We're just going to be sitting on, uh, you know, lazy boy chairs yeah. in here. Um, so you do need to think about the way that you're going to set up your room and what room you use mm -hmm. for as a general rule of thumb, smaller rooms are better mm -hmm. for in-person podcasts. Yeah. And if they're full of shit, that's even better. Like you want a room that has, you know, a wardrobe in it and clothes hanging and you just want as many soft materials as you can get. Um, and then, so something that Spencer has done, which I think is really, I, I don't know if you probably didn't do this on purpose, but this is like a multi-use room. Right. So he has his editing equipment in here. He has all of his video equipment in here. So it just gives more stuff in the room yeah. to take away the echo a little bit. For sure. Yeah. So multi-purpose, I wanted to, as soon as I walked through my double doors into this room, I wanted to feel like, okay, this is where I'm getting my work done. Mm -hmm. um, but just to add to what you're saying, yeah, you want things that are going to absorb the sound or, or dampen the sound and, and take away that echo. So, uh, you know, just full transparency, this this podcast here might sound a little bit more equity. Equity? Equity. Equity. Um, so there's there's just a lot of noise bouncing around. I do have a couple sound panels um, set up here just behind me, but I'm going to be in, uh, putting more on the wall um, and then figuring out what other things can I invest into to help absorb some of that sound. And, and you know, this, this just goes back to setting up an in-person podcast again is like, okay, well, how much money are you willing to mm -hmm. invest? It's almost like every time you realize, like, you just always are spending money on something new. You're something. like, oh shit, we need that. Oh yeah. shit, we need a mic for our guest. Oh crap, we need, you know, chairs. more sound panels. We need chairs. Yeah. Like it's just, there are so many things that you don't think of that like add to the cost of actually getting it up and running. Absolutely. And you know what? That's, that's a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. right? And that's what you said. Start very small, work your way up. And this is where we're at now. Like we've been able to evolve to this point to be in person. If it wasn't right. in this house, it would have been at like some studio of some sort, right? right? Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, with that comes with an additional cost, you might be paying like a, a fee every time you go to rent mm -hmm. that studio. So it, at least this way we own everything. Right. And uh, worst case scenario, if we're like, we're done with podcasting tomorrow, you could always sell it and, and move on with your life. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, the nice thing about this is like, yeah, we're going to be able to evolve over time. So like Bridget mentioned is we need a carpet and mm -hmm. probably a few more sound, sound panels. And mm -hmm. then who knows, we'll, we'll just kind of keep building it um, from there. So yeah, it's, it's fun, but for, I'm, I'm impatient. My thing is you like, just want it to be like pristine, perfect, ready to go, ready to go mm -hmm. right away. Just so I could just get the work done mm -hmm. instead of always being like, Oh, I need this now. Like this isn't perfect. And right. like, there's no such thing as perfect. There really will never, isn't. we'll never think that these podcasts are perfect. No, we'll always be striving. No. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's all you can do is strive yeah. and, and continue to just keep moving. Like right. it's all about taking action. We, we find a solution or sorry, we, 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 we see a problem and then we come up with a solution and right. it's, it's, it's all about the journey. It is. It is. So yeah, like start off with what you have. Like if you are transitioning to in person, just mm -hmm. start off with what you have and improve as you go. It makes it a lot easier to make, think that way. It keeps you more on the, it keeps you in the game longer. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe. Right. Yeah. Because I think people get to watch your evolution. True. Yeah. Like we're going to look back on this episode mm. in a year from now and we're going to be like, ha. Yeah. 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 Right. And we're going to be laughing with a team behind us mm -hmm. laughing. And, and oh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what, what comes from all this. Like already. Like how, when did we start this? When did we start? The start whole, the podcast? The whole bar high. Um, has it, it hasn't been a year yet. No. Uh, no, it hasn't been a year yet. It was around. We decided to start picking up around March, April. Yeah. -ish. And we've done a lot we've since then. Lot. You were doing client work and stuff before then, but yeah. when we started to like make a team and start building the brand of right. Bar High Media Podcast, that was around April or May yeah. or March or April this year. Oh, so wow. it's been what, like five months? Yeah. 
And that's that's like not even a lot of time. No. At all. But it, it seems like it, it was. It seems like it. Yeah, because there's just so many moving things. Yeah. Right? Okay. So let's... many things that you need to think about. <laughs> if you're enjoying this content, we also have a high quality video version on our YouTube channel. So if you're not already watching the episode and you'd like to watch it, head to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash barhighmedia. <laughs> um, okay, so now when it comes to equipment, Equipment. That wasn't the right way to say that. Equipment. We're gonna have a book of equipment. Bridget and Spencerisms <laughs> from this episode. Equipment. Um, when it comes to equipment, uh, there as it's as we talked about, it's expensive to do in person recording. So we're gonna kind of go through. We actually haven't really talked about how much we spent, so this is gonna be kind of a brainstorming session because we don't really know. But we're gonna tell you what equipment that we have and how much roughly we've spent setting up this room. Mm. <laughs> the only note that I have on my outline right here is quarter inch adapter. Quarter Let's inch start adapter. there. Nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> so the first thing that we purchased, but so we already had, both of us already had laptops. Yeah. Number we one. were doing uh, remote recordings. We both had laptops. If you want a good laptop for podcasting, best laptop to go with is the MacBook Pro. The most recent one, if you can, a couple of years old is not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and then because we were recording remotely, I only had a USB microphone. So okay. Spencer had a microphone that uh, you can use XLR or USB. So, and for an in-person recording, you need an XLR microphone. So I had to go and buy an XLR microphone. I got the Audio-Technica 2100X. It was under $100 on Amazon, and it's uh, this. it sounds pretty good if you ask me. So that's what we got for both me and for our guests that are coming on. So let's say we're at $150 bucks right now. Perfect. Um, what else did we get? And then we got, uh, Spencer got the... Oh, so I went all out on the sound, um, what's it called? The audio interface, just because these things don't devalue. So I thought, why not invest in the best one? Mm-hmm. Worst case scenario, I need to sell it, right? Right. Um, so I got the Scarlett XI8, mm-hmm. or sorry, 8i8. I think that's how you pronounce it. And uh, yeah, so it's a focus right. It's a great device. Um, pretty much plug and play. You yeah. Download we don't the know software. the full functionality yet, no, but we're working on it. Exactly. <laughs> Still learning. So far, it's working great. We hear each other. We were able to just plug everything in, and it was working right mm-hmm. away. Um, what can I say about it? Is if you are using, if you are using an, an audio interface uh, that has to be plugged into your computer, make sure you have a good. Um, software to record with like i'm mm-hmm. using uh, adobe edition right now to right. record so if you do have a macbook i think you could use like garage band I yeah you could use garage band audacity is a free one that you can oh, download okay. uh from the internet garage band you could probably use imovie if you wanted to but just use garage band yeah <laughs> yeah i'm sure you could just type in google free recording software right yeah um but i have experience with adobe edition uh, just through editing my past podcasts. And yeah, so right now I'm currently recording right. this and recording off of Riverside off of my other computer. So. Yeah. So um, what else do we have? The headphones. Uh, Spencer spent a pretty penny on his headphones, which you don't need to do. You can use kind of any headphones around the house. It's nice mm. to have over ear ones and headphones that are wired. So I just got these like nice purple ones. Yeah from that are on gi- brand that are gigantic they don't look bad <laughs> they so don't just look been bad. telling me they don't look bad for the past 25 minutes because i'm like <laughs> i hate my headphones uh, but these are great ones i think i got them for like 40 bucks on Perfect. amazon like you can just get over the ear headphones um do you, oh we didn't talk about how much the focus rate cost yeah remember? so the focus right was about 700 dollars. so you could go <laughs> yeah you could go much less than that you could do i think they're called zoom mm-hmm. um zoom audio, recorders or zoom recorder yeah. uh, audio interfaces pod and, track and those right. there yeah pod track that's right mm-hmm. yeah and those don't plug in directly into your computer you could actually just have it on the table you plug your mic your headphones into it and it actually record to an sd card oh, okay yeah so it's a, a way convenient way because you could just kind of go wherever with it right like i'd have to bring that giant piece of tech with me my laptop and everything right with the autopod put on the table plug everything in yeah and it goes off of batteries yeah that's great that's 
super simple, especially if you are, you know, taking your podcast on the road and you're maybe 100%. you are going to a guest's house to and just setting up anywhere. Yeah. Should be kind of cool. Uh, just having like a different set every time. It hey. would be so much work though. Uh, no, I mean, you just buy the autopod and bring headphones and microphone. Yeah, but then you got to figure out like, where does your camera go? Does yeah. the room sound good? True, true, true. Well, that's like what Bobby Althoff is doing. Like she always goes to her guests. Yeah. I'm obsessed with her right They have a right bedroom now. or a closet. She's she's mm-hmm. down to hang out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and yes, of course, if you're getting headphones, you can't forget the quarter inch adapter of that course. you need. Yeah. <laughs> to, Mine came with one. I got lucky. Yeah, to plug into uh, the audio interface. Um, and then what else do we have? We have a cam- a 4K camera, but that's something that Spencer already had. Yeah, so um, I had purchased a Sony 7C, A7C. And I'm sure you could use any sort of mirrorless camera mm-hmm. or... You could use your phone. You could use your... Yes, yeah, so you can yeah. use your phone. Is like So just think like start small, work big, right? For me, I, I was getting into photography and videography through my vlog and stuff. So like I had a lot of these... Um, tools already at, at the tip of my fingers that I've just kind of thrown to right. thrown together, right? Um, but like full transparency, like I I like to buy things like at its peak, like yeah, the best because I've just purchased. What did you say the other day? You have a gold a gold finger or a gold, gold thumb, thumb or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like it's not that like I don't trust old technology. It's just like you just I, want the best of the best. Yeah, but I, I have so much experience with buying things used that mm. when I have purchased it used or it's a couple years old, that software is always upgrading. Right. So when you buy something that's um, older and you're working with newer software, there's always some sort of bottleneck True. every time. And so I've just learned that, you know what, to save myself a headache. Also, a year from now, I could probably sell that camera for maybe two, three hundred dollars less. Right. But if I'm buying something that's already used, it has no warranty, da 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 da. Mm. It comes with all of these like risks. So True. I just thought, you know what, buy it outright, mm-hmm. get a receipt. Especially if you have a business, you're able to write some stuff off. You're you're gonna lose money if you're just buying it second market, depending on what it is, of course. Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I got this mic. It, it also comes with anxiety when you buy something like secondhand. Like mm. I got this mic. One of them I bought new, and then the other one, it was like a a refurbished one that was like checked or whatever. But you know, when I took it out of the box the other day, and I'm like, why isn't the light working? Why don't my headphones work? Like, Mm. just constantly wondering, like, what's wrong? Where, where, where did I go wrong? So it does, it is nice to just lose the anxiety and just buy a fresh one because you can always contact the company if you have any issues. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, that's about it. We have some lights as well. Um, those run probably about a hundred dollars on Amazon. Um, so I would say in total, we've spent like not including our computers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if we include our computers, like $10,000, but, uh, not including our computers, I would say this has cost us 1500. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could go about there. Like if you go the, the, okay. So like, let me break it down quick. So if you do an audio, uh, interface on like second budget, like mm-hmm. you're looking at maybe $300 there. Yeah. A mic is maybe you could do like a snowball mic. Yeah, yeah. Under a hundred dollars. So we're already at four a headphones. You could do Apple headphones, right? Yeah. Those are what? A hundred dollars. Yeah. Give or take. And so there's six and then you could use your phone. Uh, which you already on, have you so. already have right so maybe you could do it for under a thousand bucks yeah 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 you could right you could it, you might run into no per you person, wouldn't even run no. into what <laughs> per person per person yeah, yeah. so Your about 1500 bucks yeah <laughs> yeah yeah per person so it is a bit of an investment but yeah. it's a lot of fun like i'm en- i'm really enjoying doing this yeah. a lot more than i was than i enjoyed um remote podcast yeah. so it is a lot of fun so next up we have, how have we decided to set up our studio? So we had a lot of talks while we were setting this up about, do we want to be on a couch? Like, did we want to get a couch for it? Did we want to get chairs for it? And one of our clients got like two really nice chairs that he's using. Um, did we want, and then Spencer brought up the idea of using a table instead. And I was like, that sounds great. Let's do that. And it, I don't know what, what would, what brought up the idea of using a table for you rather than, you know, like a cozy spot. Yeah, so I don't know, just one, I'm looking at the podcasters that I watch mm-hmm. and how they interact. Mm-hmm. 
And then there's other podcasts that I watch that, um, you know, I was just trying to get a, a feel or an understanding of why they went the direction of like using a couch. So for me, I like being able to sit across from you mm-hmm. and like be shoulder to shoulder. Rather than being like beside it, yeah, each and other. Like, like, like talking this way. Like, I guess we could do that and kind of like talk to the camera and, and yeah. whatnot, right? But like, I then I feel like I'm talking to the camera and not having a conversation right. with you. I'm having a conversation with a camera. So it's right. actually two people instead of one, mm-hmm. right? Where this way I get to actually talk to you. Yeah. And I'm able to, one for me, like I'm, I'm easily like distracted. So now I'm able to focus on you and actually have a hundred percent, hundred percent of my attention directed your way mm-hmm. where like a couch I'm looking over my shoulder there's the, the right. entire room now to take in so I just thought okay let's try the table approach and if we feel like this isn't working okay then we could always evolve in the future by the way this table was fifty dollars and it's, it's sturdy it's sturdy it doesn't creak none of the sore and like I'm comfortable I and it was on marketplace it was on marketplace. see when you're you can always buy it when it comes to equipment buy it new when it comes to furniture buy it used <laughs> boom boom that's the way to go I love it yes <laughs> yeah so and and as you can see like if you are watching the episode the it's pretty bare bones right now mm-hmm. As we, you know, evolve, maybe we'll get like a plant or um, we're thinking of painting the wall behind us. It's going to be painted white and then we're going to get some LED lights around it to make it more branded. Like there are different ways that you can kind of brand your podcast, which is really great if you're creating real. Again, I love talking yeah. about reels, but if you're creating reels out mm. of your podcast, you could get a colored couch. So that's like a brand staple in your reels. Or you could get colored chairs. That's a brand staple. Or you could paint the wall behind you. Or you could get an LED, you know, logo light or something like that. So there are just so many different things. Yeah, that's next on the list. So there's just so many things to think about. Mm. And this is like the just the beginning yeah. of of where we're starting and you can always evolve and it's just it's fun to think about like how you can decorate and how you can make yourself stand out from other podcasts absolutely and it just goes with creating an environment that you want to feel creative in yeah so, like you look forward to being in your podcast mm-hmm. studio or your office or whatever yeah and yeah so you know if you have a creative mindset and you want to or creative like perspective of how you want to create your your podcasting area mm-hmm. like go right ahead yeah that's what i'm excited for the most like, yeah like, right now you said it's bare bones i'm like yeah like i can't wait to like pimp this corner yeah out and like make it like you know the spot you think of getting like vinyl for over the table too i have you? some already oh you got it i have it i nice. just uh, i just need to figure out how i want to do it like the table kind of like it, it has this like weird like spot i don't Edge. know it doesn't just like oh, yeah. hook under like directly so yeah, i don't know i'm like gonna have to round it and okay, yeah, yeah. i don't even know one. how to describe that but yeah. <laughs> it's weird okay yeah. um yeah the last thing that we had to kind of decide when we were setting up the studio was how do we want to frame the camera for mm-hmm. us mm-hmm. so we were considering me bringing my camera and having one camera on me spencer has you have two cameras uh, just the one. You just have the one. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't really get that gonna, far. We're but... going to use um, the phone. Or no, right. sorry, the GoPros. Yeah, so we were going to do like three a three-point setup where mm-hmm. we would have one camera on me, one camera on Spence, and then one camera on both of us. But then we looked at some other podcasts that set up this way, and we were like, we can just do have one like and just cut in yeah. in post. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going to try. We're going to see how it looks. See how it looks. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to, to get to the editing point of yeah. this too. Cause, Are yeah. you editing it tonight? Uh, maybe. I have to clean up a couple other edits. Right. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to like... I'm excited for our reels. I know. The reels are going to look so sick. Yeah. And, and hopefully now I don't look like I, uh, I'm in 720p. <laughs> if you do so do i yeah so. uh, no you're every time your camera's yeah. bang on because i use continuity cam. that's yeah. why i use my so if you are recording remotely you can use your iphone as an external camera if right. you have a mac yeah so that's what i was doing for all my previous for all the previous episodes which is why my camera looked like pristine because yeah. i could film it up to 4k well moving forward if we do go back to um on the computer right. i i i got that you got it attachment nice. so okay yeah. so you yeah. won't look like <laughs> I run a media company, but I'm in 720. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I'm aware. Like, what? You guys edit video on your this is a media company, but you, you can't even have good 
camera quality. <laughs> Fail. This podcast is powered by Riverside.fm. Riverside is a platform that allows you to record high quality audio and video remotely and edit it over the web. It even has a beginner friendly text based editor. So if you're thinking of starting a podcast, Riverside will help you to get it up and running quickly. Try out Riverside today. Use our affiliate link. We've linked it in the show notes. Uh, all right. So our last talking point is the technical issues that we've dealt with. Mm. Uh, because, you know, as we said, it's very technical setting up an in-person podcast. So, uh, I mean, we haven't ran into too many on this podcast. On ours was on flawless. our podcast. <laughs> because it's all new equipment. Yes. <laughs> Saves you a freaking headache, I'm telling you right now. Also, I'm very tech savvy, depending on what it is. But right. Spencer's actually one of those people. I find it amazing. Spencer doesn't look at instructions. Like he pulled out the focus, <laughs> right? And he just decided to just try to set it up. And I was like, is this a guy thing? Where like, Will, my boyfriend Will does the exact same thing where like, he just, he'll take out something and he won't look at the instructions and just try to set it up. I was like, that's the first thing I do. I, I like go through the instructions and I, I set it up one by one. Because it's, it's like when you're in a classroom and somebody's teaching you something, right? They say, okay, this is, you know, the lesson on the board. Now I want you to like put it into practice mentally. Right. For me, I'm like, no. You need to physically do it. I need to it. be doing it and yeah. I will learn along the way where I went wrong. And right. Like, if I, if worst case scenario, I need to Google or go to the instructions, worst case I will. Scenario. But, <laughs> Gotta Google it. Yeah. Like, I just, I, I find like once I start to plug and see how things are, are connecting, like, usually there's a prompt that will pop up on your computer to right. execute the next step. Right. And <laughs> you so just follow the instructions yeah, on the computer. And also, for speaking for Will and I, like, we have enough experience with, technology yeah i find like they're kind of like similar in a way that true it's just, they're, okay. you kind of know like when how you're gonna screw up if you're gonna yeah screw up like if it's asked me for a blood sample to hear <laughs> my voice and i'm like okay maybe i will take up the instructions this is a little <laughs> yeah. <fucked up>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh can i have your firstborn child whoa all right <laughs> this is not right nope, i'm taking it back <sighs> take it back if it asks for a blood sample yeah don't never <laughs> never um, another thing that we did have to deal with um, was mic bleed. So okay. something that yeah. I didn't know and Spencer didn't know before we got into in-person podcasts was mic bleeds are pretty much like you can't avoid them. And no. mic bleed is when the other person's mic picks up your voice. So right. you still, so if we were to play just Spencer's track of this recording, you would hear kind of quietly in the background, me talking For as sure. well. Mm -hmm. So that was something that we didn't really know was mm -hmm. going to be an issue. And we didn't, we didn't know that we couldn't get rid of it the first time we set up an in-person podcast. Yeah. So it's just, it will always happen with in-person podcasts and you got to, um, like, sorry, I, I put my stuff on Do Not Disturb, and it's disturbing me. My phone never goes off, ever. I, yeah, is I, that because uh, you have no friends? Yeah, that, and I just there turned off all notification sounds. Because when I operate at my other job, I I can't get distracted. Right, So I true. just turned it off Oh, that's off smart. Fully. I should do that, because like it, it really takes you away it from... It takes you away. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, you just saw it firsthand. <laughs> um, so yeah, what we're talking about, mic bleed. Yeah. You can't avoid it. ADHD. <laughs> ADHD. <laughs> and do not disturb. Um, yeah, you can't take it away. So what would, what is your editing technique that you're going to do because of mic bleed? Or like, does it not matter because my track covers it up? Does um, that make sense? Uh, so there's 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 going to be many options. Uh, a lot of AI systems out now or software that's out now where um, you could do voice enhancement where it'll just zero in onto your voice and clean that up because it's okay. the most dominant mm -hmm. wave that's that's talking and right. somehow the AI so it'll take out that. like the lower yeah, volume one exactly okay. and then um, but then like what if you were talking in a lower volume at one point and then you got really loud mm -hmm. and then you got like I guess it might be kind of hard to figure that out 
I think it will pick up on my tone. And if you aren't in the background, then I shouldn't have a problem. True. Second is your audio interface. If you have a good audio interface, it should be able to separate that and, and really clean up the um, individual mics mm-hmm. when it's recording. Same thing, basically from here. I don't have enough audio experience to give a, a, a direct or per- specific mm-hmm. answer so that's why for me like when i go into the post and try to edit this up it's going to be a lot of trial and error what sounds good what doesn't sound good and he will not google it i will potentially google it oh yeah okay. yeah yeah and you know what youtube and google are my best friend you, you you guys you would be surprised how much you could learn if you just take two seconds of youtube something you'll learn it in a second instead of trying to trial and error some things Mm -hmm. um but yeah so i will play around in adobe edition um i edit a lot now on davinci resolve Mm -hmm. um i don't know if i'm gonna edit the podcast moving i I edit all like my videos on davinci but i I don't think i'm gonna edit this uh podcast on davinci so i edit on adobe that's where i started originally with editing a lot of my stuff and with adobe they've been killing it with a lot of their enhancements Mm -hmm. and updates for um editing audio and stuff so there's uh noise reduction there's echo reduction mm-hmm. um reverb dehummer so there's a lot of different effects that i could throw onto the audio and just i'm gonna have to play around okay. with it so yeah i don't think it should be too bad but also another thing that crossed my mind is your room right like mm-hmm. we started this conversation like how is your room designed is there other means of um sound absorption right right but because this room is a little bit more echoey that's where i'm going to get that there's also if you have a room that's like a weird shape too oh. like you can get echoes off of different walls so you kind of want to have something that's like bare bones square yeah, yeah. so you're not having like your voice echo off of you know the top slanted wall to this wall i don't know how that would sound i mean i i don't really hear differences in that stuff but that's always stuff that like top audio people would talk about another thing is your microphone you want to get i think it's that you want to get a dynamic microphone because a dynamic microphone only picks up what's in front of it and eliminates any background noise whereas i think it's a cardio cardioid microphone i could be wrong about that but there's another type of microphone that's good at like picking up sound all around it which Mm. is good if you're I think if you're maybe like a musician, mm, I don't know. Okay. I don't I don't really know a lot about microphones, but I do know that you want a dynamic XLR microphone for in-person podcasting. So one like the Audio-Technica 2100X or what you have is the AT2020. Yeah. AT2020. I think the same one you have at home. Yeah, just, except mine's the USB. Yeah. So AT2020, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, so those are two really good mics. You well, could also... this one here, like, yeah, it says the back of the mic right here. And then mm-hmm. I have just the front. So I'm hoping that, you know... It, it like, eliminates the back something. noise or something like that. So definitely uh, pay attention to the microphone that you get. You can get good quality ones for not very expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, the last thing that I we had to consider for technical issues was um, when you're working with clients, you want to specify to them, depending on if they're going, I mean, if you're listening to this, you might not be working with clients, but um, USB mics versus XLR mics is what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. So you really want to, I think I talked about this a bit earlier where a USB mic is good for recording directly in your computer. It has something like it, like within the mic and the computer, it's its own audio interface or something like that. But if you're recording in person, you're going to need an audio interface, which you need an XLR mic for. So mm-hmm. just being like, just not, don't get the wrong mic kind yeah. of thing. Cause it's always annoying because you can't make a USB mic an XLR mic right. unless it's a hybrid mic. That's right. So yeah, that's something like, to consider. I have um, an audio interface for my computer, like my actual desktop. Mm-hmm. That's why I have this. And so back, not back in the day. Um, yeah, I guess back in the day, I really was getting back into gaming hard. And mm-hmm. I was like having, like I said before, the best stuff. So right. you know, the, that's why I researched up. A lot of people had these audio interfaces. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had I had purchased the microphone in the headphones first. And I was like, oh, no, I need this extra device. Yeah. And I, and I was like, darn, what do I do? So I, 
Yeah, I yeah. ended up getting this audio interface and then it worked after that. But, you know, it's just those like extra expenses that you just don't foresee. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, going with a USB plug is, is pretty yeah. good. But be mindful with the evolution of plugs now. You have USB-C mm. and then you have Ugh, USB, right? So yeah. like all MacBooks, there is no USB. So you might need an adapter an if adapter. you get a USB one. Or I yeah. think actually the... Audio Technica, the AT2020, the one that you have, but the USB version that I have now comes in USB C. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, be mindful of the connection on your computer as well. That's a good thing to know. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I I do have one thing to add. Yeah. So, another thing with the in person podcast, and this isn't a a tech, I guess it could be a technical thing, is connection, internet connection. True. Right. You don't need it. You don't need it. Um, I, from our past conversations or past, bleh, past conversations that I've had with other guests is what is their connection like? Right. I've had some weird conversations with people because there was such a delay between us and that kind of ruined the flow of 100%. the conversations. I think we had an issue with that, didn't we? Yeah, we had it with Aaron. We were doing a podcast or Aaron and I had one because I did podcast with a friend of ours mm-hmm. who she did this death race and I was like, cool, let's do a podcast on it kind of yeah. thing, right? Um, Spencer's go-to thing when somebody does something cool. Let's oh, do a yeah. podcast. Yeah, we got to talk he'll, about he'll it. He'll invent a new podcast just to talk just to you. Just to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, they're like, why can't we just sit down over coffee because it's got to be recorded. It's got to be recorded. I need it documented. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a technical issue and it's um, another benefit of talking in person. Like we don't have, that's mm-hmm. why we have the headphones. Like I hear you clear. Right. Right. And like there's no lag. We could keep our flow of our conversation 100%. very fluent and there's no like, oh, oh no, you talk or yeah. like. Oh. Like we can uh, figure out each other's body cues. That's right. Well. Yeah. 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 Like. It, you know, if Spencer sees me and like my eyes light up or something, he knows to acknowledge it, fit like slow down what he's saying and pass the ball over to me or vice versa. Mm. Whereas sometimes you can't really get that. On, right. Like I do notice yep. a better flow between us being in person 100%. than over the web. Mm-hmm. So yeah, internet connection is definitely it's just not, it's not something that you have to worry about, which yeah. is good. And that sucks when you get that when you're like. You know you're in a good flow and the other person just starts talking randomly. Yeah. And like, you know they can't hear you or anything. And like you said, like reading the cues, like knowing when to pass mm-hmm. the ball off and like letting that person talk. Oh, yeah. this makes it so much easier yeah. than I'm realizing anyways. Well, we hope that this episode has helped you with your journey of deciding if you're going to do remote podcasting or in-person podcasting. I think the main takeaway is kind of, you know, start off with remote get used to it, Mm -hmm. get used to the flow and then upgrade as you go and eventually turn into in-person and take inspiration from other podcasts that you've been watching on Instagram reels or on YouTube or on Spotify, uh, Spotify podcast as video now. So if you're watching them there as well, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, if you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe to it, uh, to the show on your favorite streaming platform or on YouTube. We release a new episode every other Friday now, which is exciting that we've actually launched. And I can say that now because before I was like, we'll be releasing another episode at some, at time. some point. Yeah. So <laughs> every other Friday, a new episode comes out. We have clips from the episode going out on social media throughout the week. If our content calendar starts actually posting the things that I'm posting. Oh, I know. Posting, that's, that's frustrating. That, um, that's a whole different Which talk. is a whole different topic. Yeah. So if you found this episode valuable, make sure to share it with a friend who would also find it valuable. That helps us a lot. And thank you for listening or watching. And we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah, we'll see you in the next episode. Also, just to add to that. Guys, if you have any feedback for us. Yeah, feedback is great. We love feedback. Please send it our way. Shoot us an email. Yep. media at gmail.com. Com, mm-hmm. Go to the website, whatever. Comment and, on our reels. Yeah, yeah. You could leave us a review on yeah, Apple Podcasts. That's great. Just preferably positive, but I mean, if it's negative, that's fine. Hey, <laughs> you know what? You, you Feedback's gotta, feedback. You got to get knocked down to get back up. Exactly. Right? So yes. I could take a few hits. Um, 100%. As long as you're not talking about Bridget's headphones. <laughs> <sighs> oh, <no. laughs> Nobody talk about my headphones. <laughs> All, right. All right. Peace. Peace.